What's going on guys? Today we are back with another video. Today's video is going to be a little bit different. Uh, we're not actually going to actively fish in this video, but I always like to put one of these videos out kind of before the upcoming season gets here, right? As to kind of basically to get ready for the upcoming season. And we've been fishing kind of this early summer pattern now for like three, four weeks. And uh, fishing's been good. You know, we're kind of finding a fish and a lot of that like eight to 15 feet of water and that depth zone is about to change and kind of how those fish set up on spots and what kind of spots they're on is about to change and we'll kind of save that stuff we'll kind of hint at some little things in this video but we'll kind of save a lot of the specifics for another video but along with that change in fish location we also change our presentation quite a bit and there's a whole bunch of lures um, you know in the next month here that you're going to see me using and filming with a lot more that I'm not using right now that I haven't used for previously this year. And you know, generally we all kind of know fish kind of go through the same progression in every lake, right? Um, a lot of times in the spring our fish are shallow, in the early summer they slide a little bit deeper, in the midsummer they come a little deeper, then in the fall a lot of times they come back up to some shallower stuff. So you know, this is the time of year where we're starting to fish for fish that are going a little bit deeper, right? And that's why a lot of our, our, our baits start changing up too. So um, that's what we're gonna talk about in this video. Basically my four favorite midsummer walleye fishing lures and um, you know I don't really use like a million different lures in the summer but if you can think about it like this for example in the spring when you're fishing five feet of water there's a handful of lures you can use that are productive up there right um, you can kind of cast crank baits you can you can jig up there shallow and you know there's not really like a, a million different options for fishing way up shallow well when you start talking about depths from like 15 to 25 there's a lot of options to fish out deeper. So this video is highlighting my four favorite midsummer walleye lures. Stay tuned, we're gonna talk about them, give you guys a ton of information. So we're gonna start here with two of the casting or jigging presentations, then we're gonna move on to trolling presentations, right? And one that is a standby all year long for me is snap jigging or rip jigging plastics. And summer is a great time to do that. There are some changes we make to kind of the standard presentation we use. You know, a lot of times in that spring period, early summer, we're fishing a lot of that water that's five feet to like 12 feet deep. And that's a great depth for like an eighth ounce or a quarter ounce jig. Now, come midsummer when these fish start pushing deeper, we go up in size. I fish a lot of three eighths or half ounce jigs. And the, kind of my standby is still the same plastic. I still fish a lot of the Kalen's Jerk Minnow Junior. Because this plastic is so erratic and you can snap it so hard and you can kind of walk the dog with it underwater. Um, it's a very good presentation for erratic fish, right? Or, you know, those fish that in the summer, these fish are willing to move very fast because the water is very warm and they're very susceptible to a very erratic, fast presentation. So I take this and I put it on a 3 8 ounce Google Eye jig or a half ounce jig. You can put it on a half ounce too. And what I'm doing when I fish this way is really pretty simple. I'm taking the bait and I'm getting it way out there. And I'll kind of walk you through it here. I'll kind of go from where spring was um, to kind of where we are right now. But in the spring, you know, we're doing a lot of like this right here. I'll kind of move over a little bit so you can see me a little better. A lot of stuff that looks like this with the rod. These short, quick pops, or I'll even go down to this when the water's real cold. This early summer, we're popping it pretty good, you know. Well, with this 3A sounds and fish in the summer when that water temp gets up, upper 60 to really upper 70 degree range, you can really rip on this thing and, and get some explosive bites. And now I start going to a lot more stuff that looks like this. This very hard, aggressive rip. Boom, hard, aggressive rip. If there's one thing we've learned over the past decade of walleye fishing, is that these fish are extremely susceptible to these very hard, very snappy, you know, style baits. Look at like the phenomenon with the jig and wrap and stuff like that, right? Walleye fishing has very much become a thing where it's a lot of very hard ripping and the fish are definitely keyed in and they love that kind of stuff, especially in the middle of summer. So I'll keep doing it here, very hard rip. Sometimes you can double tap it like that. And the same thing applies. The three eighths ounce or half ounce is gonna fall much quicker so you can work it a lot faster in deeper depths. But the same thing applies. Generally snap it a couple times, keep that line tight on the fall. Snap it hard to keep that line tight in the fall. What you're gonna feel is that big boom, you know, that huge, that fish is just gonna crack it this time of year. And you can do the same thing with swim baits. The swim baits, I'll do a little bit more like this quick pull like this, yank that thing off bottom. And this is an absolutely killer way when you're trying to work like, um, you know, like let's say a, a deeper flat or a deeper weed edge, something like that. I snap a lot of this stuff through sand grass or deep cabbage in the middle of summer. And it's super effective because a lot of times you're snapping it so hard, you just snap the weeds right off and it comes through very, very weedless. It also works great if you're fishing rock too. Um, you know, if you're fishing super big chunk rock, it's hard to fish because you might get snagged a lot. But uh, I do a ton of that, especially, you know, like let's say for example, you, you know, 
if you spend a lot of time fishing live bait in the summer, the bite's kind of finicky. And then you get a day with a good wind, a little bit of overcast, and those fish kind of slide up out of the basin. They're kind of relating to that deep weed edge or that outside of that shallower rock bar in that 15 to 20 foot zone. That is a killer way to fish. And it's a killer way to work a lot of water for those aggressive fish, and it definitely gets big bites. Jigging a plastic is one thing that's really a killer all year long. The specifics on how you work it and the weight of that jig is really all that changes throughout the season. So definitely that jerk minnow on a three ace or half ounce head or a swim bait um, is a killer way to fish. And I'll go ahead and link all the stuff down below. My, my favorite color is definitely that Arkansas shad color. Um, it's just a killer way to fish. And I'm almost always fishing this on an Elliott rod 6'9 medium fast. And it's just a, a great rod for doing this. It's really a great multi-purpose rod. Now, the next casting or jigging presentation is just that. This is the um, this is the Acme Hyper Rattle, and this is just a, an absolute powerhouse. I mean, if you follow walleye fishing a lot, um, you probably know of just everything that's going on with this style of baits. This one, um, the Rappel Jig and Wrap, the, uh, uh, the Shiver Minnow, they're all kind of the same, the same similar principle, right? Um, this is a heavy lead bait, and uh, it's got a couple of different tie-ons. I always go with that front one, kind of balances it out, and and I always throw a snap on there. But how you fish this, you can either fish it very vertical, or, which is one super strong thing, because plastics generally do not work very good straight vertical, or you can short pitch it. Very rarely, I never make try to make long casts with this. Most time I'm fishing this, I have fish pinpointed, and I'm either going straight down next to the boat, or I'm casting this out a short distance and kind of working it back for fish that I've already found. And we might snag up a little bit here because it's weedless, but you know, a lot of times when I'm going vertical, what I'll do, is I'll find those fish and I'll keep my left hand on the tiller and I'm dropping it down right next to the boat, right? Once I'm on bottom, I like to do basically like this, snap, snap, snap. And one thing that's different between this and a plastic is that I want this to fall on a slack line. Snap, snap, drop, snap, snap, drop, snap, drop. You can see how aggressive this is, right? It's a very speed, quick way to fish. I have a lot less luck in the summertime going to like a jig and a crawler, right? I have a lot more success doing this kind of stuff vertically than a live bait presentation going vertically. And it works great for fish are active because it's very quick and enticing, and it works good if fish are very negative because that bait's so snappy, it's just that reaction bite, right? Just like that. Snap, snap, drop the rod. And one big mistake guys like to make with these is they want to do this thing right here less good. All that is doing is pulling the bait up and dropping it down. When you start doing this whole snap cadence like this, that bait's going thump thump and then it's falling very quick. And most of your bites, what's going to happen is you're going to go boom boom. Bait's going to hit bottom. Very important that it always hits bottom. You're going to go to rip up again and it's like you're stuck, right? You're stuck in the rocks or you're stuck on a snag. That is the fish trapping that bait to bottom, right? Snap, snap, wait till it's on bottom. Snap, snap, wait till it's on bottom. And a lot of times you can watch it all go down on your sonar too. It's a very kind of, you know, you're driving around looking for a pot, drop quick, boom, boom. You know, you give it 30, 45 seconds. And if you don't get bit, you pretty much just reel up and do it over again on another pot. Now, if I'm working this on the cast, yeah, we got a little weeds here, because we're sitting in a weed bed. But if I'm working this on the cast, what I'm doing is I'm not throwing it very far. You know, I might pitch it out there 30, 40 feet. And you can almost just work this bait a lot of times without even reeling it very much. You know, it's kind of so erratic that it almost just sits in place. Boom, boom, a couple taps, boom, tap it, snap it. And this is what you're doing, right? You're not really reeling that bait in very far. It spends a lot of time in the zone. And a lot of times what this bait's doing is it'll go boom, bounce this way in a snap, and then it might go backwards back the other way. And that's one reason you can almost just kind of fish it in place a lot of times and just keep walking it like this. You can see I'm not even reeling right now, and that bait's probably only moved, you know, two, three feet towards me, really. And it's just a very effective, and you're gonna see a ton of videos of me doing this in uh, the next month here, for sure. And really, the, really the rest of the season, this is a killer way to fish. But um, this is the Acme Hyper Rattle. This is definitely my go-to for a lot of these deep rock-dwelling fish or deeper flat fish. And uh, this is the larger size. There's two si or two colors I really, really like. One is this. One's called like Purple Descent. I'll go ahead and throw a picture of it up right here. This is the clown one, and then that Purple Descent are definitely my favorites. And I always get asked about cutting hooks off these. I don't cut any of the hooks off. 
Um, fish lunge at these and get them wherever they might get hooked up. And uh, I like to have all my hooks there. And unless you're fishing like massive chunk rock, um, snagging is just, you know, it doesn't happen a, an extreme amount of time. So that's that bait. This is the biggest size, like I said. You always want to throw a snap in there. And the rod is definitely, you definitely want the right rod to do this on. This is the 7.3 Medium Light by Elliott. And what you want is you want, definitely want a rod that has a fair amount of tip load. And the reason for that is you want a little, or basically you want that tip load, but you want a backbone. If you're fishing with a rod that's too flimsy, what's gonna happen is when you're popping these baits because they're so heavy, you're gonna get bent like way down in here in the rod, and that's just not what you want. You want that floppy tip on the rod, like a medium light here, so that when that fish bites, it's not just like an immediate boom. You know, like imagine you're fishing with just a pool cue and you go to rip up and that fish is on. Well, it's just gonna be too much pressure on that fish too soon. You want that tip to load and kind of let you know you got a bite and then you kind of, you know, you know, basically set the hook or just pull. It's not a real lot of hook set in the way you fish these baits, but you want that rod to load up a lot while you're fighting these fish because this style of lure is very notorious for fish getting off on. And uh, because I'm casting so short or fishing straight vertically, I don't put a swivel in there. You can put a swivel in there if you want. I just tie it direct from 10 pound braid. Um, and I do go up a little bit on my leader size. I'll go with like a 12 to 15 pound fluorocarbon leader. Um, just cause you're hitting this bait so hard that knot is susceptible to breaking on a, uh, uh, a lighter line. So definitely you wanna go up a little bit in that, uh, that lead size, but 10 pound braid, like I said, I'll link all this stuff down below. Uh, this is the 7.3 Medium Light Fast by Elliott. It's a rod I, I really like for doing this so far, and we're gonna be using this one and similar rods in the lineup a lot. You know, a rod that has good backbone, but also has a fair amount of tip load. So, and then I'm pairing all these up with the Pissy Fun Carbon X 2000. This is just my go-to walleye reel. It has been tested and true um, for years now for me. So, um, kind of moving on, you know, those are kind of my two favorite casting, jigging presentation style lures for sure. Now in the midsummer, trolling is a huge player for me, right? And probably most of us, probably a lot of us who do seriously walleye fish, do a lot of trolling in that midsummer period. And there's basically two things I troll a lot. One is live bait style spinner rigs, which is what we're gonna talk about next. And you know, you can, some of them are single hook rigs. You've seen us do videos on this. Some of them are double hook, like the crawler style rigs. And uh, basically the principle is, is that you're trolling live bait. You know, that's, that's, that's the main reason a spinner rig is, is such a great way to fish. And this is kind of in the same category as like a slow death um, or, you know, things of that nature, right? Um, a spinner rig is just a way to troll live bait. And, you know, there's a million different colors and sizes. This is kind of your standard deal here. Um, you know, a couple beads in there, two hooks on here, two single octopus hooks, and then just kind of your blade, right? And uh, this is like generally a four foot lead, um, four or five foot lead. And, uh, you know, that's like 14 pound fluoro down to a little swivel on there. And there's a couple of different ways you could fish these, right? If you're if you're in a one line state, and uh, uh, you know you're working very specific contours, and you're trying to keep that thing very close to bottom. Generally, we're, what we're going to run these on then is a bottom bouncer. You know, something that looks just like that right there. And you can go, you know, one ounce to three ounce. You know, kind of depending on what you're trying to do. If you're trying to keep that bait very close to the boat and follow a really direct. Um, ziggy zaggy brake line, then you kind of want to go heavier a lot of times and almost kind of manually manipulate that rod with your hand, right? Um, you know, if you're going to be running like real big flats um, and you're going to be running planer boards and stuff like that, putting these close to bottom, then you can run that lighter size, that one ounce, two ounce, because they're much less snaggy overall. And the other thing to remember with lead is lead, the heavier you go in lead, especially if you're trolling with planer boards and you make a lot of big turns kind of following structure is that the heavier that thing is the quicker it's gonna fall right so a lot of times I like to try to run the lighter stuff one ounce one and a half ounce and basically what that lets me do is that if I am fishing a rocky bottom and I'm trying to stay five feet up and 30 feet like 25 down I'm not as susceptible to getting snagged with these lighter ones I got to run a little bit more line out to get the depth I want but on my slow downs that thing's not gonna go way down into the rocks super fast so Kind of the other way that I'll run these um, is with snap weights and inline weights. And that's something we'll talk about down the road, but basically all those are is an inline weight. It's just generally like a bullet shaped weight that you run, you know, five, six feet ahead of your bait. And a snap weight is basically a less intrusive way if those fish are very finicky or in clear water. You'll take like a, like a offshore clip. I got one right here. 
and you'll put like a like a one or a three ounce weight on the bottom of this then you just let out about 40 50 feet of line snap this onto your line and then let it out the rest of it right that spinner rig alone does not have a dive curve so you have to have weight and if you're wondering about the dive curves on any of this you can pretty much google it or find a trolling app somewhere that's going to give you a dive curve for different ounces and speeds for running spinners or crawler harnesses or stuff like that so um, pretty simple there now 90 percent of the time i'm doing this in the summer i'm fishing a lot of suspended fish and i definitely like putting putting these on planer boards basically so that i can run more lines right and basically all planer board does is obviously gets your bait way out to the side of the boat and lets me run like you know six to nine rods at a time when i'm doing this and running spinner rigs i definitely like having tattle tails um, these are the Opti tackle boards. I think this is like the medium size. Um, I've had good luck running these. Another one's good offshore boards. I ran offshore boards plenty of times. Um, the only thing I do to them is I put these offshore clips on the back, right? And basically all the tattletail is, is it gives you, you know, when that bait's running like that, um, you know, it's running clean, fishing good. If you hit bottom, it might kind of go like that. And when a fish bites it, normally what you happen, you see, is that flag will go like dink, 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 and then it'll just get pinned and start going backwards, right? So you're only trolling about a mile to 1.2, 1.4 when you're pulling spinners. And I spend a lot of time putting spinners down like 15 to 25 feet over deeper water, like 30 to 80, 90 feet of water, especially in the early summer period. And it's just a killer way to catch walleyes, especially when the crankbait bite's not on or those fish are more keyed on like a bug style deal. And crankbaits are the next thing we're gonna talk about. I do a lot of suspended or structure related crankbait trolling in the middle of summer. And this is the same thing. It's, it's putting baits down, you know, in, generally in that 15 to 25 foot range um, is a lot of what I do. And there's a million different kinds of crankbaits and uh, I've got a million different kinds in the boat right now. But definitely some of my favorites for sure are uh, Berkeley Flicker Minnows in the number nines and 11s. And that color right there has caught just a million walleyes for me, right? Uh, that's that purple descent color. I love purples, especially in clear water. And you know, this is the same deal with this. You can find dive curves for them all over the place. And most of the time I'm long lining these, right? I'm not, I'm not adding weight to them, um, but I put them down in a lot of that 15 to 20 plus foot stuff. And I'm almost always trolling these on boards and I'm using this to cover a lot of water. Now the difference between like right now or spring and summer is that you get fish in a lot of areas where there's not like specific structure, right? There might be a lot of fish on a 27 foot sand flat. There might be a lot of fish on a big vast gravel shoal in 21 feet of water, right? That stuff doesn't happen in, in, in May and early June for the most part. Most of the time, that time of year, we're fishing around a weed edge, we're fishing around a big rock point with big rocks or things like that. We're fishing a lot of that five, six, seven feet of water. And uh, that's the reason summer is such a great time to troll is fish get out on these vast areas and generally will spread out a little bit more and trolling is a super effective way to catch them and uh, you know whenever you're trolling whenever I'm doing this long line planer board trolling um, line counters are an absolute must trolling stuff overall is relatively inexpensive I run a lot of six to like eight foot um, you know moderate action rods and uh, you definitely want that moderate action rod and then some trolling reels you can get plenty of trolling reels for like 50 to 100 bucks and uh, it's a great way to cover water and it generally especially um, when you're fishing suspended fish in the summer um, your average size you're going to see in walleyes is going to go way up and uh, it, it's absolutely my favorite way to fish a lot of our best big fish days on these very deep very clear lakes are uh, 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 you know in the middle of summer trolling and in a lot of days that look just like this we got a little wind no clouds in the sky that midday bite is absolutely phenomenal i think the reason is just because you get so much bug life and so much bait life high in the water that almost the bait comes up to the walleyes and right and it's just a feeding frenzy up there and uh, they see something fly by them and they got a bite so um yeah this is kind of what you guys are going to see a lot of me filming probably in the next couple weeks here really probably the next month and a half and uh you know a lot of guys probably do relatively well for spring walleyes because it's that shallow water deal. It's not kind of mentally very challenging to figure out. Um, and then come summer and a lot of guys walleye numbers probably drop off, right? And you know, it doesn't have to be that way. It's, it's, it's definitely a big change in the way you fish. The depths are normally a little bit deeper. Fish might be a little bit more spread out. And uh, you know, the lures, the lures definitely change. But you know, if you guys load up on kind of these four options, you know, a crankbait, a spinner rig, snap jigs and plastics, and jig and wrap, and that uh, um, Acme Hyper Rattle 
style lures, um, you're gonna be good to go. And this is definitely what we're gonna be using for the next month or so here. So hopefully you guys enjoyed this video. I know there wasn't any fish catches in it, but I always like doing one of these just to kind of get the information out there before the bite's upon us and I'm filming it. And uh, hopefully it benefits you guys. So I appreciate you guys watching. I'm gonna go catch some fish and uh, stay tuned for more. Thanks for watching.